welcome to news click we have once again going to be discussing uh, the rafal controversy uh, new revelations are, are uh, coming out but rather than discuss all the details uh, we have with us ragu uh, d raghunandan a defense expert and uh, a colleague in news click uh, and we'll be discussing not uh, we won't go into so much of details but we want to focus on the key elements of this rafael controversy welcome for this interview ragu uh, i let's i like to start with uh, raising the first uh, query that is that comes to my mind which is when the government submitted its documents to the before the supreme court now that the matter is with the supreme court and they were reserved their order they said they had to go in for this deal because our neighbors our uh, adversaries were acquiring uh, fighter jets of uh, uh, a much more modern and high tech than what india possesses and uh, hal dasault dasault's negotiations to sort out uh, the guarantee warranty work share agreement uh, remain unresolved uh, i'd like to ask you raghu that if it is so that uh, that the security situation in our in our immediate neighborhood was such that compelled the government to go in for a changing a request for a proposal of 2007 uh, to a truncated form uh, does it make sense to you as a defense analyst i mean does it make sense to you that it that we can fill our requirement by going on for going for a for a fewer number of fighter jets than what was required originally from day 1 this has uh, been the biggest problem for any defense analyst mm. uh, when he looks at it it looks patently absurd that you know that your own strength is depleting yeah. in the air force you know that simultaneously you uh, potential adversaries in your neighborhood are arming themselves and that the imbalance between what is required for preparedness and what you have has been increasing by the day mm. uh, that is clear and that is why with all these factors in mind the air force had carefully thought and put out a proposal to induct 126 uh, aircraft mm. now to say that negotiations were stalled and therefore we had to go in for an emergency procurement but only of 36 aircraft does not make sense if you thought that there was a problem in the negotiations the first thing should have been to try to untangle those mm. uh, negotiations how to get it out of the quagmire uh, yeah. it was in to scrap it and then go for a emergency procurement of a much smaller uh, number doesn't make sense and clearly the air force also does not think it made sense because it soon put out another request for 114 uh, fighters which then begs the question then why not have a revised 126 aircraft tender which had gone through all the procedures rather than do this mishmash of buying an emergency requirement of 36 and then going for something else Doesn't but they are also being less than uh, truthful on this because it seems both the uh, sol seric uh, trapier who's been giving uh, interviews right left and center but he is also on record as well as the, the former chairman of uh, hindustan aeronautics limited himself uh, shri raju t subarna raju who is on they are both on record having said that they had sorted out this problem and in fact the hal uh, ex chairman said that the uh, the 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 documents were submitted to the to the nda government to the modi government and that they should uh, bring it out in public because it would make it very clear that the work share agreement the question of warranty and guarantee etc etc had all been resolved that's right so uh, the government in its uh, uh, note which it has filed in the supreme court has advanced two uh, rationales behind this one was 
that the uh, our immediate neighborhood immediate neighborhood yeah. is mm. there and if we needed aircraft uh, on an emergency basis the negotiations were stalled and therefore we had to go on why the negotiations were stalled the, they have clearly and openly blamed hal mm. to say that this is hal's uh, Uh, problem in fact it's been open season for uh, for uh, exactly. hitting out at for hl for no rhyme or reason by even by the, serving by iif the officers by the serving iif uh, officers it's extremely unfortunate that this is being done because then for any future uh, contract why will any foreign vendor or for your own armed forces have any confidence in your own public sector defense public sector uh, well, one of the one, a senior ifs officer went so far as to come out in defense of private not just private entities entering military sector but much more than coming out in defense of anil ambani group and and uh, the sole ceo eric trapier has also specifically stated that on the question of guarantee he has said very clearly I don't know about this problem. We didn't have a problem. HAL said they would give a guarantee for their thing. This is a problem between them and the government of India. So my understanding of this issue is, if the negotiations were stuck, and the negotiations were not stuck because of a problem between HAL and Dassault, correct? It's a problem with the government of India had with HAL. HAL. Then it raises an even bigger question. was the prime motive just to kick hal out of this process and then redo the process so that you can favor private sector yeah. uh, industry that seems to be the only conclusion because it's not dassault's problem about hal it's your problem with hal as far as the government of india was concerned otherwise it would makes no sense why ministers of government That's bureaucrats right. and serving air force officers That's will right. go out of the way yeah. to damn hl yep. and and come out in That's defense right. of a private party like the anil ambani dhirubhai right. group that's right let's move to the second question that we have in our mind that that needs to be looked at little carefully uh we have a defense procurement procedure 2013 the government also says that they went by the dpp 2013 uh, uh when they went in for this so called intergovernmental agreement and this was a government to government deal right now there, there are several questions that have arisen in the courts of supreme court hearing which raise a question about the nature of this uh, this peculiar uh, nature of this government to government deal yeah. uh, reportedly france doesn't have a policy or a procedure laid out for government to government deal when gum indian india swears by government to government deal and and projects this rafael deal as being uh, far superior to a competitive bidding they the, the the questions that comes to our mind is that then why in a government to government deal there is no sovereign guarantee given why is it that in a question in in uh, if in the event of a dispute Geneva is uh, said to be the seat of arbitration whereas under DPP 2013 it had to be New Delhi that's right and sovereign guarantee is a must if it's a government to government deal if it's a competitive bidding then the bank guarantee has to be provided by the vendor right now you are negotiating directly with the vendor not with the government you have waived two core conditions of the government to government deal so what kind of a government to government deal is it and what does it say about our defense procurement procedure then so there's two issues uh, involved uh, and i'd just like for the purposes of explanation to separate uh, okay. them the first is the decision making process itself and that's what this is before the supreme court now uh, is how has this decision arrived at and the document filed by the government says we have strictly followed the defense procurement procedure of 2013 of 2013 which to my mind is completely erroneous because they have listed all the steps that 2000 that the dpp requires and which were followed in the case of the 126 aircraft deal but in this case the decision was first announced by the prime minister at a press conference mm. 
standing next to the French president mm -hmm. and all the other steps of going before the acquisitions uh, council, the negotiating committee, the final seal by the cabinet mm -hmm. committee on security were done post facto. What their government is trying to say, which earlier also government spokesmen have said is that the prime minister did not announce a decision. He announced an intent, intent to go in for it. This is farcical. When the prime minister stands on the world stage, sitting next to the president of France and says that we have decided to go, yeah. a decision clearly has been taken. The note itself says that soon following that press conference, steps were initiated to cancel the earlier tender. That means a decision is taken, otherwise you would not have cancelled the earlier mm. uh, tender. So then retrospectively you have put a, a rubber stamp mm. Uh, mm. on it because the Prime Minister has made the announcement and in this government in particular, who can question the Prime Minister? Mm. Uh, I think this is a very important uh, issue because if there was a crisis, which is the case that the government is making out, that there was procurement going on by the neighbors, that our negotiations had collapsed, then it particularly needed bringing together of minds of uh, the uh, Air Force uh, chief, the leading bureaucracy, the political leadership of the cabinet committee on security to take stock of this crisis situation and take a decision. So it is precisely that it, the emergency situation should have required a consultative process, which is what the defense procurement procedure is, rather than the prime minister taking a decision and then all other uh, things following. Uh, in That is first. Secondly, as far as the intergovernmental agreement is concerned, I think the intergovernmental agreement issue is being done in order to bypass many of the rigors which the defense procurement procedure calls for. You may seek to understand this by saying, well, you know, India was in an emergency situation, it needed 36 aircraft immediately and therefore we needed to short uh, cut this, therefore we decided to call it. But if you had really wanted, as I said, you could have called a meeting of the Defense Acquisition Council, expedited the processes, expedited clearance by the cabinet committee on security and taken a decision. In any case, even after the prime minister announced this at the press conference, it took a year and a half before the final agreement was yeah, signed and then three years more for the first aircraft to get uh, to start delivery. So I don't see how this squares with the idea of an emergency procurement and short circuiting of this. The most astonishing part of this is the absence of a guarantee of arbitration processes being outside. Uh, so the beneficiary of all this is who? Does so? Because the French government has no hand uh, in so this. So you mean the question that can be posed is whether the government of India was doing, going Dassault out of its way to help Dassault? Exactly. Or actually exactly. catering to the needs because of the country? Because in the earlier agreement, Dassault would have been held accountable exactly. by guarantees, by arbitration processes, etc. And the government of India has given an advance of close to a billion dollars to 1.1 billion 1 euro. Bi euro without a bank guarantee. Yes. Under the guise of this is an intergovernmental agreement, but the money is going to Daso. Yes. So I don't understand why you are on the one hand favoring Daso, a private agency abroad, and two, favoring some private agencies in India. Uh, through offset uh, contracts. In both cases, I think India is the loser. This brings me to the last question. I mean, the, the way in which Rafal deal has progressed or rather regressed makes it very clear that, that if this is the way we go by, then it's going to completely destroy the defense military sector, which is the key. Now, as a defense analyst, Raghu, what do you make of this? Because the question that arises is, in order to accommodate, because people are going out of their way to defend this deal and defend the entry of, of, of a private party, despite 
many serious questions about its financial viability, its commitment to probity, integrity, uh, liabilities, etc., etc. Despite that, if they are going out and they are willing to damn the Indian public sector. As a defense analyst, how do you respond to this? See, I have two problems with this. You may say I have an ideological predilection mm. favoring public sector against private sector. Honestly, I don't. Uh, if we have to have a robust defense industry, no private sector organization in our country has shown evidence or capability of being able to develop the capacity required. If at all we want to develop uh, capacity in the private sector, we should be doing what has been done in atomic energy or space, which is bark on the one hand in atomic energy and BHEL, which has been manufacturing uh, equipment for nuclear power plants, has gradually built up a vendor base among private uh, companies, starting with components and gradually leading towards maybe larger participation in manufacture. Same approach has been done by ISRO, who have developed now a fairly extensive base of vendors in the private sector who are capable of supplying to it. And soon there will be satellites being manufactured by the private sector for uh, uh, this. This is this way, if we had gone even in the aviation uh, sector, you could have built up uh, capacity. That is, in fact, what the offsets were designed for. Originally, that the was the main objective. The problem now is the offsets are only being looked at as financial instruments, not as instruments of uh, developing capacity and indigenization. The in the military which, sector. In the military sector. Yeah, yeah. And the note which has been tabled in the Supreme Court starts in explaining offsets, saying the main purpose is indigenization. What indigenization has been done through the offsets that we are told? And the government saying, we have a hands-off approach mm. to offsets. This is left to the original equipment manufacturer abroad and whoever they identified here. So if they identify a caterer or a panwala, is that good enough? Would not the government want to have a say? Does this promote indigenization? Well, Eli Trappier said, Eli Trappier believed that uh, people have a right to start from scratch. Fair enough. So, that is as far as Trappier mm. is concerned. Government surely will have an assessment. Do these offsets enable? Unfortunately, over the years and the latest amendment to the DPP 2013 now says you can do offsets. You let us know after three years what offsets you are going to do. At that stage, if the government finds that this offset is not doing anything to help indigenization, we can't where do, do you anything. go mm -hmm. uh, after that? Even that was done uh, uh, post the decision to go in for this exactly. truncated uh, exactly. deal. Uh, exactly. And it's, uh, they, they try to apply it retrospectively. Right. Raghu, uh, this is enough for today. Thank you for today. Uh, but we'll be returning to this Rafael story because it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> there are too many skeletons yes. that lie buried here. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching News Click. If you have any responses, if you want to, uh, if you have any feedback, we'll, we welcome it. Please uh, send it to us. Uh, thank you once again and keep watching News Click.